Time now. We open the doors quarter to seven. Uh, so we take him to start at seven. seven, seven. Start at 7.30, 7.40, after that we have the unit classes here. We don't have Kamicha here today to orientate you guys go up, but I'm just going to be calling you, so we three by, by, by three people. So. Thanks for your help. And you missed the whole announcement, we have to start it again. <laughs> oh, it's everything that you know. Um, tonight we have Louise. Hi, Colleen. Oh, she's joking. Joy. Uh, Louise is from Brisbane Spirit Center. Our brother, sister, no gender. Gender neutral. The gender neutral Spirit Center. Uh, they have their meetings at. I never remember this server. I always think it's Morningside. It's besides Morningside. No, it is Cannon Hill. Cannon Hill, but it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, they have their meetings there on Wednesdays night. Uh, you start seven thirty. Yep. We start. We st start at seven. We open at seven. Yeah, um, but they do a bit different. They, you you give healing passes on the entrance. Yep. When people arrive, you receive the healing passes. While here, we do at the end of the meetings. So they open the doors at seven. Do the healing passes. Their lectures start at seven thirty. Goes to eight or so. Um, meetings are Wednesday. Every Wednesday. In Portuguese. Uh, but it's in Portuguese. So if you want someone that wants to join, or be there, be here. It doesn't mean you're giving us, you have to stay with us. We are very attached to people. We don't detach from people from our center. We're very attached to you guys. So if you're missing, if you go missing, we're going to chase you. Um, yeah, so that's it. Any questions? Anything? Anyone, the new people that are returning, would like to make an intro break? Do an intro break? Someone maybe that works at NASA. No, we, we don't. We don't like to put people on spotlight. I'm sorry. No, that's not us. We're very comfortable. Okay, she's going to do an initial prayer, and then after that, please decide. Our presentation. Gente, vai ter 15 para as 8, não é isso? Vou 
we'll go up to our quarter to eight. Yes. Uh, Seven thirty. Okay. Well, good evening again, and thanks for having me. Uh, tonight, I was asked to talk with you a bit about resentment. Uh, when I first saw the the heading, I said, "Oh, resentment." Well, it's not really uh, a gospel uh, theme. It's more like a a psychol a psychol psychologist theme, not a gospel theme. I said, "Oh." I start looking at it, start doing some research. And then I said, oh, really? It's a big mis mixture of gospel and psychologism. As what Jesus left to us, his teachings were so simple and so difficult to follow in a way that we are all we always mix them in a sense that we think what Jesus told us is very high very difficult so we go and try find human solutions to our problems and resentment I when I looked just a bit of it. I said, oh, it's just being, uh, being forgive, uh, forgiven, as Jesus told us all the time. So first thing is, please, we are, it's not a speech, it's a conversation. If you have any questions okay uh and we're gonna continue on i'll try to answer your questions the best i can okay. so first thing is can you define what is resentment what is this feeling anyone <laughs> yep. <laughs> when we attach to a feeling, a person, or a situation, or something that happened, and we don't want to let it go, or maybe we have to let it go, but we still feel that we are still attached to that. And for me, how I feel resentment, I can find myself thinking over and over about that subject, that situation yeah. that brings that feeling to me. Um, sometimes can make me lose my a good night of sleep, and then I try many times to talk to myself. That's not going to solve your problem to overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. Take a deep breath in, you know, and the steps towards I could do to stop my mind to feel that situation that I'm not going to solve that. So I can have a good night's sleep and try tomorrow to deal with that. But resentment is something that kind of you know that feeling when you go on a roller coaster and then you up up there and then you go down on yep. a very fast speed? It's like that physical for me, that physical thing in my time. Yep. Uh, yes, anybody else has and wanna say uh, emotion? Is an emotion that allows a feeling? Yes. In my yep, that's another very good definition. Uh, if you look at if you look up dictionary, resentment is is a 
perception of unfairness. Oops, sorry, I touched the wrong place. It's a perception of unfairness from trivial to very serious and a generalized defense against unfair, as we see, situations. Can be relationship, people, you, you name it, okay? Look at Wikipedia. I think they have a much better uh, definition there. Uh, actually, first thing they say, resentment is also called rancliment or bitterness. It's a complex, multi-layered emotion that has been described as a mixture of disappointment, disgust, anger, and fear. Psychologists consider it as a mood or as a secondary emotion because it arises from something else, which we're gonna talk a bit, a bit here, that can be elicited in the face of insult or injury. Okay? So what you said is correct. If someone or something offended us in a way that we don't like or came to us in a way that we don't like, we, f we felt hurt and we kept that to us. We kept that bitterness as Wikipedia tells us. We don't let go as Jackson would say. We keep cooking that feeling, keep cooking that feeling. And many times the person who supposedly offended us is not even aware of the situation. They can even think, oh, I did nothing wrong. It was just a simple attitude. Um, I am hurt. Um, as I feel the resentment, I feel that emotion and I don't let go. Jesus told us, oh, taught us that we should forgive not once, not seven, but 70 times seven. Meaning we should forgive endlessly. Okay? It's not that Jesus would say, oh, you, you have to forgive infinite times. Most people wouldn't even understand that language at the time. Jesus just made up a big number to show that we must always forgive. And that's the idea he brought to us. And when, we, when he taught us to forgive, we normally wanna think, or in Portuguese we say, oh, I, for, I forgave, but, I, uh, but don't forget, thank you. It's a very common saying in Brazil. So really, we still carry that load. We still carry the resentment. We still carry that bad thing. We didn't really follow Jesus in his, in his teachings when he said, forgive. Uh, Chico Xavier, I believe most of us as spiritists, we know him. He was, he, he passed away just 20 years back and he psychographed uh, over 400 books, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he was the most proficuous uh, marketing for, for spiritism. And there is a, a move about him and the move shows that uh, sometime uh, at uh, a passage, someone didn't like a message he brought and went and spat on his face. What he did, he cleaned up and continually worked. And when asked if he forgives, said, I don't feel offended. 
I don't feel the need to forgive because I, I don't feel offended. That's a very high attitude for us. And I don't really, it's something that I, I, I am not able to do. I am not in that position to say, yes, if someone mistreat me, I don't feel offended. That's it. I let go. No. But what can we do when we have, when we feel hurt, when our feelings are hurt? What's the attitude we have to forgive a, a, a person? How many times we feel offended and just go to the next person and say, or go to Alex and say, Alex, G did that to me. I don't like what she did to me. I go talk to someone else and I don't go talk to G. I'm sure we'll have times that she'll come to me and say, yes, I meant to offend you. I don't like you. That's it. But if that's the case, we, we let G have her feelings, have her bad feelings towards me, and I forget about it. It's not, no longer my problem what she feels about me. But 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 if I keep it to myself, I'm keeping this my problem. I'm keeping this to me. So what happens? I am taking a load that shouldn't be with me. I'm taking a load that it's not really mine. In this case, it's hers. So why don't I give back to her? That's a, that would be a very good Christian attitude. We're just saying, yes, your feelings are yours. You don't like me. You keep this bad feeling. I'm fine. You've, you've tried to offend me. Okay, I go away. There is no point in trying to keep a friendship with someone who doesn't like me. And that's the real point of forgiving, is giving back. But our pride thinks that always we are better. We are perfect. That's what we think of ourselves. We always think that the others are doing bad to us, not that we have a bad attitude. We don't think, we don't look inside ourselves and judge ourselves as St. Augustine used to uh, teach us. Every night he looked at his attitudes saying, Look if he has offended anyone, what he had done and what he could do better. That's the inner reform. That's the way of looking at our attitudes towards the others and trying to do better every day. At the end, this is the most important teaching from Spiritism. All, this, all the teachings we have would resume in we came to this world with less moral, less knowledge. We, we are in this material journey to learn, to get on the other side of this material life better. And how do we do better. We try to improve a bit every day. Just saying, today I am this, but tomorrow 
I will do a bit better. In a sense, starting 10, 20, 50 years, I can look back and say, my attitudes back there were very different. We, I was a person with much more pride, with much less forgiveness. And now I can give love. I can share love. I don't share my pride. I don't share this feeling that everyone is trying to do bad to me. Uh, there is a, I, uh, I love listening Brazilian podcasts and I always forget his name, sorry. He's a, he's a relatively famous uh, spiritist uh, speaker. He's a psychologist. Uh, oh, Sandro Kenji, thank you. He has, he does every Sunday on CBN, he has a, a program with like 15 minutes and he talk about psychology. And as a spiritist guy, he, he puts that in a spiritist way. It's, I highly recommend trying to listen to, to him. Uh, this past weekend, uh, they were talking about the feeling of being right. Right, okay? Uh, I am Mr. Right. I am the, always, I am right. And their talking was, life must be very hard for someone who thinks that, who, that they are always right. They are all, they have always the reason they are always reason just think when someone contradicts us how do we feel about it how do we feel when someone tells you no as husband and wife <laughs> see it's very hard isn't it very hard that very hard because when when Alex try <laughs> when he tries to do something that is not what you really want, what kind of feelings it brings to you? Yep. I know I am married as well. So that, that happens and she's over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep exactly see thank you colin uh, colin just messaged us about the brother of the prodigal son who uh, if you don't remember the parable the prodigal son he he went out uh, and he asked for his share in the, in, from, from his father, went out and wasted all his money. Very quick. Uh, when he had wasted all his money, he came back and his father got him back and sacrificed um, uh, a cow for, uh, for a part, on a party for him. His youngest brother was very annoyed with that because he was saying, my, my brother went away, wasted his money, and now he's back and waste mine. It's, a, it's that kind of feeling I am talking about. It's the feeling that it's mine. It's everything is mine in the writer's way. Uh, if you are, for the ones who are Brazilian here or listen to Brazilian politics right now, what happens? 
One side has their views. The other side have their views. But they don't bring solutions. They don't bring proposals. Not one side, not another side. But this side keeps saying this one is wrong. The, this side keeps saying this one is wrong. Isn't that the sort of attitude we have on our day to day life? We come and say, you are wrong. You're not doing the things right. Because it's much easier to criticize someone than to look inside us and say, this can do, this can do, this can be done better. So I propose this solution. I bring to you this offer. Go to G and say, G, wow, what's going on? Most likely, she will not have the attitude that she had before, but she will come to me and say, what? What happened? I don't even remember it. We can have a chat and then we come to an agreement. Is it to, for, to forgive? Or if it's just set our prideness aside for a while and take the time to listen to someone else, to listen to someone and instead of having that heavy luggage in our back, feeling really bad, we change and solve this problem. And we evolved just a little bit. That with our aim, that's our day-to-day -day aim. Uh, this lack of forgiveness is really our biggest problem because it's come, it's always come from from our prideness. We are pride. We think we are right. We feel offended. We feel the others are wrong. We feel we are rightful. And we never let things go. That's the message I have for you. How we behave, how we see the world, how we see each other. Do we see that we are here in a competition where everyone else is he here to hurt me? Or you, you see that we are in animals living in a community and we have to help each other and evolve together. Even when we are in a competition, we can gain. We, we don't need to be hurting each other. We are competing to progress. We are working together to progress. That's all that it is. It's not our pride. Let, let try to, let's, let's try to put aside our pride. Forget about it for a second and see what's the best attitude we could have. That's my message for tonight. If you have any questions or comments, please. And then she said something that is like, I don't know, but once someone say out loud, it makes, oh, oh, 
approach because sometimes you have such an authority that you really have to know and mm. don't pay attention to those feelings. And, uh, because we are allowed to feel that it's one thing as people, mm. but we have to process that and try to see a better outcome. And then we were talking about those things. Uh, and then she said, Oh, I just heard Martin say that why are you such in a hurry to get there? But like, we are eternal. So mm. just try to do that thing. I bet it. <laughs> that little bit every day. Yeah. Just to tell you why you can do it. Acknowledge that feeling. Yep. Good. And yep. use more or try to make more to make amends. No. Yep. Uh, uh, St. Augustine. It, I think it's the perfect way of change ourselves. Just at night, watch your daily attitudes, see what I have done, see what can be done different next day. See if I offended someone, I have to go back to that person. If I have done any bad and bad doing, and go to that person and say, how can I remediate it? It's hard. I'm not saying that, yeah, I do it. I'm not saying that, no. I'm just saying that's our teachings and what we try to do. We fail, yes, but if we can progress a bit every day, excellent. If we cannot progress today, but we progress tomorrow, it's okay. But don't just leave, oh yeah, I'm gonna do it next incarnation. Don't do it, because it will be worse for us. We understand that we might have offended someone, so someone might have resentment towards us, may or not. Right? Yeah. Maybe that person was Shik <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that person being offended. But um, but one resentment that I think we always have to try to avoid or clear is the resentment of not forgiving ourselves. Because what then happens is when in my reflection I understand I maybe we are saying something. So I make you guilt. And that means I make you resentful and resentful towards myself. Right? So it's a me, my with, with me relationship. Right? So that's always and as well we need also. So this resentment towards ourselves is as bad as anyone resentment towards us. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It's much harder, I understand, I think, than for the others because we expect so much from ourselves. We have so high expectation about us. But it's so important that actually that person does not sit, does not feel. And a very good way of overcoming this feeling is gonna talk with the person. You you might <laughs> no, nah, but you, you said you might you could have offended someone. Yeah, no, but then we won't talk about that. Yeah, okay, you say yeah. that you, you go and talk to stuff. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But sometimes even doing that you cannot. And you now sometimes when you've done something, uh, sometimes even unintentional and it hurts someone. And even though you find a fire something, that thing, you know, you keep that feeling and that feeling. Yeah. Yes, definitely. But if you keep if you keeping it, you somehow you think you thinking you offended that person, and you haven't cleared it. 
So the point, my point here is, have we, have we really cleared with that person talked to them in a sense that, yes, uh, I solved that problem or I just partially solved it. The example with Chico Xavier, the person who offended Chico, she, she was carrying it. She was carrying that load with her. She kept it for her. And one day she will have to get free of that load. That's, that's the biggest problem. And from Chico Xavier's point of view, he didn't keep anything. The other person did. And we have to do our best to try to keep, re, keep rid of those bad loads. I think as we, we carry a big bag without a handle. Yep. Yes. If I even could forgive everyone, I would tell you, but I know it's very hard. All I can say, I can tell you is we have to practice, we have to do our best to forgive. And when we forgive, if that person is really open, we can have a, a new beginning, I would say. Even, uh, I think a good example is always home, marriage. Okay? Uh, how many times we felt offended by our partner's wife? Okay? Uh, in a sense that, yes, she did something I don't like. Doesn't need to be anything big, but she was late to pick you up or she didn't answer the phone when you called. We forgive it because we love that person. We have love to give to that person. It's much hard when it's someone else because our love doesn't really go that far. And that's our real problem. And unfortunately, not even the forgiven part I can teach you because I need someone to teach, teach myself.
technique is love. child love yes we are more open to give love with with in our house yes but to someone outside it's much harder but practicing love do i have a formula no Forget that now, that's okay. Because that, that feeling of you remember what made you uh, sad or you know, put in that situation, it make you avoid to get that situation. If someone calls you trouble and you feel offended and you you are able to kind of keep but still couldn't forget because that situation brings bring you that pain, that feeling. If that's what you are today, it's okay. Recognize that and you are allowed to feel that. And that, because you didn't forget, you will remember and you have to avoid getting a situation like this because you know how hurtful that was. And if you spend what you're able to do today, it's fine. And the aim, of course, is to get a cheat all that time that you can have that memory, but doesn't that memory not going to bring that pain, that sorrow, that resentment with it? So that's the aim. But of course, many times we're not dead yet. But if that memory is avoiding you to get in that situation again, 
That is amazing because they're really teaching you something that, that's gonna uh, make you stop to get in that situation again, or to get in trouble, to be to someone to hurt you because you understand that's just say out of the plan and you try to talk with people. He wanna talk to you and like you two of that situation and you say, okay, I'll put me balance, but I'm not forget because every time I go to talk to him, he's always like a rock because I want to talk. So you just avoid that. And if it's that what you can do today, if it's that feeling bring you that sense of okay, I'm doing my part here, and I try to work with that feeling, it's fine. And we go care, study, self reform when you try to understand your feelings. One day, that memory that you try to talk with Alex and everything that, that brought to you, it's not gonna be there anymore. But it's in that sense that the talk less to it at all. It's like what you're able to do every day. Like if today you uh, hold on to that memory, avoid to step on that situation again, it's already good. It's just we just avoid sorrow. send us a message uh, her message is thank you Colleen the universe doesn't conspire against us but for us we are all progressing towards love everyone we meet is here to assist us to show us how and where we need to improve Therefore, we thank those that cause us discomfort. To forgive is not even natural or necessary if we constantly sit in gratitude for everyone or everything 
that assist us to become more deeply conscious of the other being our brother. That's our message. Very good. Well, we can only say thank you for this opportunity of talking, this opportunity of sharing love, learning. Thank you, God, for us being here, for this unique opportunity to share. To all spirits of light that came here tonight to enlighten us, to bring us peace, protection, to assist us with the stalking to Pedro Emanuel, our guide. Thank you for your work towards this house. Our workers here who came together to bring this work today to make it possible to happen we say thank you we want to share this love this love we received with everyone who came who comes in touch with us we want to share this love with all world leaders, taking love to them, taking a bit of light, a bit of love, that them all can receive this and do better for their people. For the ones that today say they are our enemies, we want to share this love. And the, if we offended them, that we can forgive, be forgiven, and find an opportunity to apologize. If we were offended, that we can forgive. To all our neighbors, our friends, and especially for the ones whose name were brought to us tonight. We wanna say thank you and give you a bit of love, a bit of peace, sharing 
all the love that we receive tonight. And we say thank you again, dear Lord, for the opportunity for us being together tonight. Bye, guys, from the Zoom. See you next time.